Jesus who died, now he is forever glorified, king of all kings who have ever reigned, and Lord of all lords. Amen. The ruler of the universe. I love it. We give you praise, Lord Jesus, for you are indeed worthy of praise. Well, hello, friends. Hey, guess what today is? I shouldn't say that. Guess what this show is? It is the number 200th show for an hour with Jesus. Boom, is that even possible? 200 shows in the last almost five years since we began this in March of 2020. I think we just better sing this just for the Lord. great things in this simple little hour that is dedicated to him here in America every Wednesday night at 7 o'clock Central Time, but wherever you are, because we have people that watch us from all around the world every week, he's done great things. The testimonies that have come in on how this has been people's lifeline, especially back during the COVID season when nobody was even leaving their house for several months, uh, an hour with Jesus became a real connecting point to his presence. And that's why we started it. That's what the program is for. Not just, an occupy, not just to occupy an hour of your time and go through a religious exercise, heaven forbid. Um, I want to be sure that wasn't going to come on. But uh, it was meant to lift you from wherever you are into his presence. And uh, I just think about some of the early programs and uh, the difficulties we had and how we were almost not even going to continue it. But, you know, the Lord said, just chill. Take a chill pill. Let's try it again next week. Let's try it again the week after. And uh, I think we still are trying to fine-tune this as we go for almost five years, well, four years later. We're in our fifth season, but this is coming up to the end of our fourth year of being on the internet every single week, except for a couple of weeks in August when we shut down and retool for the next season. And it's just been a joy to get to know so many of you. Many of you have become glory partners, and I thank you so much. And I give God glory for your life and for your participation in this ministry to see his presence touch people around the world. I really do. Could not do this without you. I've said it so many times. It's not even feasible. Um, the Lord has sustained us, and you have been a big part of that. Some of you aren't partners, but you send in occasional gifts. And uh, I just thank God for all of you. As Paul said, I thank God upon... Every remembrance of you all, <laughs> I really do. Wonderful, wonderful to just be a family here. 
Call it the global worship family because that's seemingly what we are. And um, Just got a neat note from a lady named Alice back up in Connecticut and a gift that she sent, and she's elderly, and, and um, it's just so great. We didn't know her a few years ago. And so thank God for Alice, you know, and, and so many like that. I could go down the list of people who have just become... Uh, close partners of our ministry. We're just so thankful. Um, I remember one one week uh, when Pat was my assistant. Pat lives about, oh, 10 or 12 minutes from here, and Liz was gone, and so I was flying solo with the cameras and didn't realize that there was a setting on the main computer monitor that did not show me what I was seeing on my monitor, Okay. My monitor was fine, but what you were seeing was blackness. And Pat tried to reach me probably four or five times, but I can't see my phone and I can't hear my phone. And so she got in her car and here I am just going after it. And I hear this voice back in the back of the studio here saying, Terry, <laughs> the cameras aren't on. <laughs> you could hear it, but you couldn't see it. So that was one of the fun evenings. I was just so thankful that Pat uh, had the, uh, the, the for, forthrightness to come over and, and try to straighten this out so that you could enjoy the rest of the program, although hearing is way more important than seeing. Amen? Uh, I'll say amen to that. Um, anyway, it's just been a wonderful journey. Um, maybe some of you want to become a glory partner for the next season here. I don't know how long God will give us grace to do this. Um, be fine with me if it was until he comes and it would be fine with me if he came at the end of this program <laughs> or during <laughs> praise the Lord. But the way things are in the world today, even so come quickly, Lord Jesus. Can you say amen to that? <laughs> I bet you are. Praise the Lord. All right. Well, let's go on with the evening then.
watching this program tonight and tomorrow and the next day and the replay on Saturday and the week following that and the month following that for those who tune in for one particular song or another. Show yourself mighty. Jesus, be a healer to those who are sick in body. Be a provider, Jehovah Jireh, to those who have great financial need. Heal wounded hearts. Restore relationships. Provide forgiveness. Where it is asked for. all to a higher place, Lord, this year than we've been before, to come to a new understanding of who you are, and to realize that <laughs> your ways are unsearchable. <laughs> your judgments are true and unsearchable. You are mightier than the thunder. speak with a still small voice at the same time through your Holy Spirit. You're everything we need, everything we want, and we love you, Lord.
that song, just love that song. I want to know you in all of your ways. <laughs> make a fresh commitment to him right now.
beneath the cross of Jesus, at the cross, and near the cross. <laughs> Wonderful little cross medley there. I really didn't know where I was going or how I was going to get there, but um, that's how the, the mind works sometimes when I sit down and start playing things like that. Well, I hope those old hymns were um, kind of fun for you to sing along with or worship with. Kind of good to think about that as soon we will be upon another Easter season. Probably, I think it's the last Sunday of March. Probably, that probably falls on, I think, the last day of March. I'm not positive on that. You'll have to check me out. But it'll be here before we know it. And we'll be celebrating again the wonderful victory that Jesus won for all eternity at the cross. He took your sins and mine, past, present, and future, and crucified them. Mm. So I give him glory.
my King. To you alone I sing. You're the face I seek through all eternity. Praise the Lord. Mm -mm -mm. Well, I hope you're enjoying this 200th program. I know one thing. It's going a lot smoother than it did for the first program. <laughs> You've heard me talk about it many times. Don't even try to find it on the Internet. It's not there. We, we threw it in the trash bin of eternity. <laughs> the trash bin, I should say. Oh, it was terrible. <laughs> the audio was distorted. The video didn't even work most of the time. And we didn't have enough signal to keep it consistent and... You know what? God gave us grace to get it right a little bit at a time, didn't he? Praise the Lord. Here's a favorite that um, uh, is on the Refreshing Volume 1 album. Cover me with your feathers my life in the secret place and shelter me in the time storm cover me your prayer. Sing with me. Cover me with your feathers, Lord. Hide my life in the secret place. Shelter me
song just brings peace to you tonight or whenever you're watching this his peace that passes all understanding no matter what you're going through his peace is a gift he's given you for the entirety of your walk so keep that in mind and if you're not in peace right now then get to peace. Realize that you're not plugging into him because he gives peace. You can be in great pain and still have the peace of Jesus. You can be in great sorrow and still find an inner peace because he said, my peace, I leave. I'm not taking that with me. I'm leaving my peace with you because you know me. That's why he was leaving his peace to those that knew him. Amen. He gave us everything we needed, folks. Let's um, look into the word for a bit. If you have your Bibles and want to follow along, I'm going to read it from the Amplified today. This is the book of Psalms, the very first Psalm. This one Psalm here, Psalm number one. There's 150 of these babies, but this one Psalm will give you everything you need to live a victorious Christian life. If you and if I apply this, if we walk in the wisdom that David is imparting here, from the Amplified Version, Psalm 1, blessed, fortunate, prosperous, and favored by God, is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked. Following their advice and example. Think about that. Are you swayed by certain personalities on social media that aren't Christian but seem to be very smart? Do you look at financial uh, wizards in this generation and take their advice if they're not following God I wouldn't take it because sometimes God does things that don't make much sense to the wise of the world matter of fact he chooses foolish things to purposely confound them 
nor stand in the path of sinners. So what is that? That means you don't go places where your feet don't belong. You don't go places where sin is obviously being practiced. You don't take things in that are sinful to your spirit man. Nor sit down to rest, the Amplified says, the back part of this verse, first verse nor sit down to rest in the seat of scoffers or ridiculers. Um, shallow thinkers, that says, or shallow thinkers who are quick to mock or disdain. So you got to stay away from those three things. You don't walk in the counsel of the wicked. Think about these fortune tellers and palm readers and astrologists who do not receive knowledge from the Word or the Lord Himself. And yet they steer many, many people down paths that are not profitable to their lives. So stay out of that. Stay out of the path of sinners and don't sit down even to rest in the seat of ridiculers. Those people that are just always ready to find fault. Go on to Facebook. You can find about a hundred of them in one post as the comments come rolling in. They're all over the place. And if you let that stuff feed you all the time, you don't realize how much it's having an effect on your soul and you will start to ridicule. You will start to criticize and to mock. It's amazing. Garbage in, garbage out. What's the proverb say? Sweet water and bitter water should cannot dwell in the same fountain so we only want the sweet water amen verse 2 but his delight is in the law of the Lord and on his law his precepts and teachings he habitually on purpose, meditates day and night. Let me read that again. And on his law, his precepts and teachings, he habitually meditates day and night. Now, if we do verse 1 and verse 2, I'm telling you, that's it. Because verse 3 is going to say, how our lives are going to go. And he will be like a tree, firmly planted and fed by streams of water, which yields its fruit all the time. No, it doesn't say that, Mr. Terry. Which yields its fruit in its season. There was a saying put out by a Bible teacher many, many years ago. He had a definition for self purpose. It was this. I'm trying to think of it as I say it, it's just coming to me now. Not seeking after a ministry. Listen, this is self-purpose. Not seeking after a ministry, but anticipating the fruit of a disciplined life. I could spend the rest of my days just trying to do that. Not seeking some big limelight place. Where, oh, do you see who's coming to town? 
but anticipating the consistency of a disciplined life and the fruit that that will yield. Little story. I am a, uh, well, let, let me just go on here and then I'll tell the story. And in whatever he does, he prospers and comes to maturity. Now let's just read that verse again. Verse three. He will be, he, you and me, will be like a tree firmly planted and fed by streams of water which yields its fruit in its season. Your translation may say in due season. Its leaf does not wither. And in whatever he does, he prospers and comes to maturity. So I am a fan, a lifelong diehard fan here in America of the Green Bay Packers. Why am I a fan of them? I never lived anywhere near Green Bay, Wisconsin. I lived in Minneapolis, which is probably four hours away, but I wasn't a Minnesota Vikings fan. I was a Packer fan because when I first got interested in sports at the age of 12, the Packers were in their, the first, the very first and second Super Bowl, and they won those handily over the Kansas City Chiefs and the Oakland Raiders. That was back in the later part of the 60s, revealing my age now. So anyway, I'm a lifetime fan. Well, uh, four years ago, the Packers, who had a Hall of Fame quarterback named Aaron Rodgers, drafted a quarterback out of Utah State named Jordan Love. And when that happened, people who didn't think Love was worthy of a first-round draft pick started to criticize the front office of the Packers. They thought, what, is, what are they doing? They, we need this. We don't need a quarterback. We have a, a Hall of Fame quarterback, the best in the league. Why are we wasting a valuable pick on another quarterback? Plus, his last year of quarterbacking, he didn't even look all that good, and he was injured part of the year. What are we doing? The Packers are blowing it. Well, that's the criticism that was thrown out. But Jordan Love, who always likes to wear a band, a little arm wrist band that says, I am second. <laughs> I like that. Meaning he is first. All right? So Jordan Love, this six foot four, 22 year old kid, signs with the Packers and sits on the bench and watches Aaron Rodgers that first year. You gotta hurry. Second year comes and Aaron decides he wants to stay with the Packers and not retire because he was getting up in years. And Jordan sat for another year and just continued to watch how Aaron Rodgers moved, worked with him during the practice sessions, would take some snaps himself during the practice sessions. And then the third year, it looked like Aaron was going to either retire or have a contract issue with the management. And it was going to be Jordan Love's turn. Well, as it turns out, Aaron decided to stay with the Packers and played and Jordan Love sat on the bench again for an entire season. And folks, when you're a first-round draft pick, that doesn't happen. That was humiliating to that young man. That was so hard. He felt like he had gifts and talent. So, at the end of last season, Aaron decided to part ways with the Packers. And they said, we are ready to move on to Jordan Love. And Jordan finally got his turn this last year, starting in September, with the Packers. And the first few games, he had some up times and he had some down times. He had some praise and he had some criticism. But he just kept plugging and kept uh, honing his skill. And the last nine games of the season, now the Packers were... Three and six, but the last nine games, they were seven and two. And Jordan led the whole league those nine games in touchdowns versus interceptions. He had 
21 touchdowns, I believe, or 23 touchdowns, and only one interception. That's ridiculous. He went to being laughed at, to being one of the best quarterbacks in the league, even got them into the playoffs where they weren't supposed to be, even won the first game of the playoffs. And next year, we're all excited about what's coming. But this was a disciplined life who just sat on the bench and sat on the bench and sat on the bench. And that's what was needed. And when it was his due season, he yielded his fruits because he was firmly planted and watered and fed. And that's the lesson for us today. All right? Psalm 1. Do those things. Don't sit in the seat. Don't stand in the path. Don't join the scornful. Just obey the word of God and meditate on it day and night and you will yield your fruit in due season. Love you all. Thank you for joining me on this 200th show. Liz and I send our blessings to all of you. And until next time, whether we see you here for 201 or there or in the air, bye-bye for now.